This is the Comica Trackshot microphone. It's a futuristic transformer-like redesign of the popular on-camera microphone. But what's the point and is any good? Being one of the most popular YouTubers in the world, I often get emails asking me to test products. And the first question I ask myself is why? Why this microphone? Why should I test it? Is it any good? And what separates it from the competition? But when I saw a photo of this thing, I definitely had to try it. It just looks so different to anything else I'd seen. If you haven't stumbled upon my channel yet, my name is Chris Spice. I make videos on all kinds of camera gear for filming on the go, from mirrorless cameras down to just your phone camera and how to get the best quality. I also try and help people make the best purchasing decisions on their next gear. So if you're into videos like this, then do hit that subscribe button down below. The TrackShot microphone is an on-camera microphone that has the added benefit of having two swiveling modules, which makes it more versatile and able to capture more of the audio around it. In theory, most microphones like this capture an audio pattern which is straight up and straight towards the subject. But where you can sort of separate these out, you get more of a stereo sound, capturing everything from all the way over here on the left all the way over here on the right so you get more of that stereo and 3d sound here's a quick example of that and be sure to wear headphones for the best results so now we're in 90 degree stereo mode on the comic track shot microphone i'm just going to walk around a little bit um, just to test the directional capabilities of it see if it gets any louder or quieter at certain points um, and as i walk around you should hear me going from sort of one headphone to another if you're wearing headphones um, so just see what it sounds like in the 90 degree stereo mode on the comic track shot microphone so in that test, you should have been able to hear as I went from the left of frame to the right of frame. Um, if you were in headphones, you would have heard it very clearly going from the left headphone to the right headphone. So that's just an example um, of how it can capture the stereo sound when it's in that 90 degree stereo mode. So let's talk about the microphone and how it's designed real quick. And it's designed very differently to any traditional on-camera microphone, obviously most notably because of the two modules, um, but also because of this large control panel at the bottom here. On this control panel, you've got the volume knob at the top, so you can have fine control of that gain. On the right, you have the headphone out socket. At the front, you have the on and off button, which doubles as the high pass filter button as well. And then you've got the mode button to change between mono and stereo. On the left, you've got the audio out and a USB socket for charging. I always like to see USB-C for charging, so that's definitely a one up from me. What I do like is the screen, which shows your battery life, which mode you're in, the levels of each module, and even a little diagram to show what the orientation of the microphones should look like in that mode. The screen is clear and it's bright, so you can always see it outside. Finally, you've got the shock absorbers, which is just four little orange cushions that I actually find really effective. Okay, let's get into the indoor tests. Um, and again, these are not scientific. I'm not Gerald Undone. I'm just doing tests in all different modes um, and then judging it based on what I'm hearing at the end of it. And we're also gonna compare it to another popular microphone as well. Okay, so at the moment, we're on the lapel microphone, uh, which is the Tascam DR10L. But we're about to switch over to the Comica TrackShot, which is connected to the Sony A7 III. I'm just monitoring the levels right now and it looks about right. So we're on volume level three on the Comica dial and volume level 10 on the A7 III. Well, right now we're in mono mode, so let's switch over to that. So this is what it sounds like in mono mode um, with the two modules put together and then obviously the microphone itself set to mono mode. So this is what it sounds like. The microphone's about a foot away from me. We're in non-sound treated room. So this is what it sounds like in mono mode. Okay, now we have switched over on the Comica TrackShot to the 30 degree stereo mode. So all I did is just move these apart a little bit. Um, there are actually hard stops for this, which is pretty good. So I've just moved these apart 30 degrees um, and changed the microphone setting to the 30 degree stereo mode. It is important that you change the microphone setting as well because it changes how the microphones record. So let's just see what that sounds like. Again, the volume on the Comica is setting three and the volume on the A7 III is setting 10. And finally, now we're in the 90 degree mode, which maybe isn't the best for filming yourself because it's going to capture all the audio around you as well and isn't necessarily as focused on your voice. But this is the 90 degree mode. Um, so we've spread the modules out to 90 degrees and we've also changed the settings within the Comica track shot to 90 degree mode. So this is what it sounds like. Finally, this is the bi-directional mode. So I've got one module facing away from me and one module facing me. Um, so this is the last mode and it should be picking up my voice on just one of the microphones and maybe to some of the surrounding areas on the other microphone. We'll do a more in-depth test on that later. So this is what it sounds like in bi-directional mode. 
And finally, just so you have something to compare it to, this is the Rode VideoMic NTG set on the same Sony a7 III. Um, the Sony a7 III is set to 6 on the gain and the NTG is set to 7. So this is just so you can compare the track shot to another on-camera microphone. So how do you think it compares? So here's my thoughts on that. I think the Comica sounded best at 30 degree mode. Um, I think it was a bit more clarity and a bit more depth than the mono mode. But at 90 degree mode, the background audio started to get a little bit more distracting. You're definitely not paying for the best sound quality here um, as shown in the comparison to the Rode NTG, but it does come a bit cheaper than the Rode NTG, um, but I think what you're actually paying for here is the benefit of having those swiveling modules. I found very similar results in my outdoor test, so let's go over to them now. So this is a test of the Comica microphone in a sort of vlogging environment. Um, I've got the mono mode on uh, with the two modules put together. I've also got the wind muff on, there's a tiny bit of wind, so we'll see how well that blocks it out. And there's a lot of background noise as well, we're in the middle of a city, there's cars driving past. Um, so this is the audio quality and mono mode on the Comica track shot. Okay, so now we've switched over to 30 degree stereo mode. I've split the modules uh, to 30 degrees and changed the setting on this Comica track shot to 30 degree stereo mode. Um, so again, this is what the quality sounds like in 30 degree stereo mode on the Comica track shot while vlogging. And now I've switched over to 90 degree stereo mode on the Comica track shot. Um, it'll probably hear my voice a little bit less now and more of the surrounding noise, which isn't ideal for vlogging, but it's just to give you an idea um, of how the 90 degree stereo mode sounds. And finally, now we're in the bi-directional mode, so you should be able to hear me through probably one ear if you're wearing headphones, um, and then probably a lot of the background audio through another ear. Um, maybe you'll use this if you're vlogging and you sort of want to capture other people in the shot as well. So if you want to like quickly turn around, but still be able to hear your voice, um, but hear someone else's voice at the same time, that could be useful. So I'll switch that back around. So this is what their audio quality sounds like in bi-directional mode uh, on the Comica Track Shot microphone. Okay, so I'm right next to a busy road now and I've got the Comica facing the road in 30 degree stereo mode. I just wanted to test the difference between my voice in this and if I turn around to the bi-directional mode, what it's gonna sound like. So let's turn it to the bi-directional mode now. Now we're in bi-directional mode, so you should be able to hear my voice a little bit clearer. It might only be through one ear on your headphones. Um, so I'm gonna equalize it so you can hear it through both ears. So now you should be able to hear my voice through both ears on your microphone. All you have to do really is duplicate the track and then in one of the tracks, put play left to right and in the other track, put play right to left. Um, and then you should be able to control the volume of how loud the back microphone is compared to the front microphone is, as there's no separate volume control for each microphone. And what you just heard there is definitely one of the disadvantages of this microphone. One of the selling points of the Comica track shot is this bi-directional mode. But I think the fact that you can't control the volume of each module actually brings the value of that right down. See, if you're filming like this and you've got the microphone facing you and one facing away from you, the chances are the one facing away from you is capturing the audio of something that's a bit further away. So you want the gain to be turned up more on this one than you do on this one because you're right next to this microphone. We end up having to turn the gain knob right down and everything from this microphone then sounds a bit quieter. So it's not an ideal situation. In my opinion, brings the value down a little bit. Um, so add that to the next one, please, Comica. Also, this microphone doesn't turn on and off of your camera, so if you leave it off, then obviously your audio is non-existent. We've all been there. And if you leave it on and you go to use it in a couple of days' time, your battery will be gone. So just something to bear in mind there, um, as when you pay a little bit extra for a microphone, you do get one that turns on and off with your camera. Again, I don't think this is the best audio in the business, but if you're one of those people that can get into um, audio editing software, uh, mess around with it a bit and make it sound better, then I think you'd be really happy with the quality of this still. All in all, I think this is a very capable microphone. It's lightweight, it's easy to use, and it's versatile. While it doesn't have industry leading sound quality, I do think it'd be a really good first microphone for someone who's into vlogging, but also wants to film some professional content too. But I think it's really up to you guys whether you'd rather pay a little bit more um, to get that extra bit of sound quality, or whether you're happy with just the versatility of a microphone like this. And that's it from me. If you found this informative at all, hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos like this, um, on filming on the go and making informed gear purchase decisions, then do hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions about the Comic Attraction microphone, obviously leave them down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.